Shannon here, you guys, if you don't know, in about eight weeks or less has already lost about four inches in her waist. That's just in her waist. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the other parts of her body that she's also lost inches in if she's lost that much in her waist? Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. So the reason why I'm bringing on the podcast today is you've been having a very beautiful transformation in the accountability program. What would you say are your biggest wins? Um, the biggest win is with the nutrition piece, um, mostly because I had a lot of sugary things in there and now I'm, I'm learning to eat seeds and nuts and things that I was like, I never thought about eating before. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's kind of opening up. So I, that's a win to me because now I don't dread thinking about eating because before I was worried about, well, I'm going to, you know, this is too fattening or this is whatever. Um, I more so am looking, the protein piece was definitely like one of the biggest things for me. Also, um, the strength training was big for me. Like I've, I've done strength training before, but never consistently, like as a part of like a regular regimen where it's happening about three to four times a week. Um, also mindset too. So like, as far as the scale, that's a big thing for me. So I'm like, I'm not worried about the scale anymore. The fat is going to continue to melt away and I don't have to worry about a particular number. <laughs> you know, I am paying attention to my clothes and how they are changing and my band size on my bra is changing. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of different things that I, I, I'm not as worried about the scale It's it's going down to me, probably in a more regular way is actual fat that's leaving and not muscle. Um, that's a little bit more reassuring. So used to just focusing on add up the calories at the end of the day, and this is what you got and, um, uh, focusing more on that. And then being afraid too, I'm like, I can eat rice, you know, um, because, you know, when you think of diets, it's so like the extremes where it's like, stay away from rice, stay away from potatoes, don't eat bread ever, you know, so <laughs> I felt like a little kid, like I can eat rice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we laugh because so many women can relate. I mean, it really... The whole weight loss industry and this whole dieting culture, yeah. we can laugh now, but those that are struggling with it, like I'm telling you, yeah. there is freedom. There's so much yeah. freedom outside of that. I promise. Shannon's yeah. here also promising and telling you, hey, listen, just just break that jail sentence that you got going on because you don't need that. Nobody deserves that. What were you initially, like where were you at before the accountability program? Um, initially I was kind of in the phase where, you know, last year I said, I'm going to get healthy and I wanted to do running and things like that. I didn't really focus on strength training as much. And so I, I had minimal results, but as I look back over the year, I was like, oh, this didn't really go the way I wanted to. So I'm like, I got to do something different. And um, I never really paid for like a trainer or did like a specific program before it kind of had this approach of, you know, the food along with, you know, mental health and, you know, um, exercise. And I had already heard about booty bands. I'm going to be honest. I don't remember exactly when I did. I know during the pandemic, I did purchase the, you know, weight set combination and I just hadn't used it and I would get the emails periodically but I saw an email come out about this program and the sale that was going on. So I'm like, let me give it a shot. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So essentially, uh, what were your goals? What were you, what were you looking to achieve? Basically looking to have permanent fat loss <laughs> because um, I've kind of felt like I've always started something, saw a little bit of results and then it was something I couldn't maintain. And then I find myself putting the weight back on. Yeah. So what were some of the programs you tried in the past? Um, I've tried, uh, formerly I've done some beach body programs, um, insanity, some of like the plyo things. And then I did something called Venus index, which was specific to just eating like a thousand calories a day. And it, it did yield results temporarily, <laughs> but it, 
it was not something that I could maintain. Um, and then I kind of went into like a regular life snafu and I couldn't keep up with my exercise and, and immediately the weight kind of started to come back on. Mm. Yeah. Oof. And so uh, any other programs that are like that too, where it was like, yeah, you, you would get results at the beginning, but then it was always short-lived. Yeah. You know, it's just generally speaking, you know how sometimes you can find some things online. Um, my struggle has always mostly been around the diet piece and knowing what it is. And I, and I've even tried, I've even tried to have a nutritionist before. Like I was going through my husband's insurance and I, I paid to have all these different like tests to figure out my, I don't know, it was like your resting calorie. I don't remember the exact rate. It was a waste of money. Um, <laughs> but I, I, and there were some tips, but it was definitely not like I, when, when I talked to you and we went over like the protein and all that. I'm like, why didn't the nutritionist tell me this? Mm, interesting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe. And sometimes they're not. I feel like sometimes too people. Well, one, I know it's an eighty billion dollar weight loss industry, and they make more money when you stay stuck. But I don't think like a nutritionist. Sometimes I just think they don't know. I think they're kind of following what everybody else is saying. But. But yeah, that's a great question. It's a really yeah. great question. Why didn't my nutritionist? Um, yeah. And so what were some of the things that you were wanting to do in order to reach your goals? So for example, I wanted it to be easy or I wanted to be able to eat things I enjoyed or, you know, what were some of those things? One of the main things was I don't particularly like counting calories. And I felt like, cause even Weight Watchers, I forgot to mention Weight Watchers. Actually, mm -hmm. I just purchased it and I'm kind of stuck paying it now for like a few months, but um, it, it they had the nice group effect, but I just felt like, the points thing didn't really work. I don't want to sit here and, uh, you know, like obsess over what I'm eating. Cause I feel like, uh, sometimes making food choices can be overwhelming in itself. And then to have to obsess like, Oh, I went over a hundred calories today, or, you know, I'm not sure if I ate the right mix of calories. I, that part I found to be difficult. So I wanted something that I could stick to like forever essentially <laughs> and not have to worry about like, okay, I have to, you know, have this strict regimen of, you know, 1500 calories and um, not having to think about it. Cause that, to me, that was like one of the most discouraging things in the past with the food side. Cause I'm like, I know I need to have a better nutrition, but I'm not sure what to do. And then it's like, it, it would feel restricting to have to just say, oh, just 1500 calories, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if you could, if you could look back, what are some things that you had tried before that truly, truly failed you? Like you thought we we're going to really work and you were like, wow, that, that wasn't even me at all. Like that was straight up. <laughs> you, you guys, this program clearly doesn't work. Yeah. And I would say if I was sick to anything, cause I never really got on the fads, but uh, Weight Watchers is one because it doesn't really tell you what to eat. It's just like, oh yeah, eat anything. Um, just as long as you stay in these points, but it's like, okay, if you use that, you might be eating something that's not filling or um, because you figure like, well, I like to eat this stuff. So they said I can eat it. It's this many points. I felt like that was something that pretty much failed because I've tried Weight Watchers more than once. And then to me, just calorie counting in general will just stick into calories in calories out. And I think, cause I, for a while I had taken hold of that, like, yeah, it doesn't matter what you eat because a calorie is just a unit of measurement. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? That was kind of what I felt like failed me. And I'm like, as I'm getting older, cause right now I'm 41. And so I'm like, I definitely want to be on muscle and, um, not have to, you know, have a reduced quality of life. Um, because I'm not being healthy. I, I want it to become a part of like my lifestyle. Yeah. Oh, thanks for sharing that. Um, and what were some of the biggest struggles that you faced just personally within yourself before the program? Um, I think I felt like a lack of self-confidence with feeling like um, I know what to do, I guess, or I, it was like a lot of guesswork, you know, kind of like, I guess sometimes we try to self-diagnose online. I was, I was always reading articles 
always joining channels or trying to figure out like, okay, what's a good way to lose weight? And well, this is how you lose weight. And um, I had always had this thing about weightlifting. Like I wanted to do it, but I'm like, I don't want to look manly or. So I kind of just had all these false misconceptions about it. And um, I kind of got to this place where, you know, you feel like you're doing the same thing. It's not working. I really wanted to try something different. And again, I always saw the emails and things like that. I saw some of the testimonials on the site. I'm like, I'm, you know what? I'm not going to, I can't do this myself. I don't know what I'm doing. This is not my area of expertise. Let me pay for it. Like I would pay for any other quality thing in my life. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for sharing that. And so what were some of like kind of the aha moments? So now coming in mm -hmm. the shifts that you've been starting to receive. The biggest thing was about protein, I guess, because like immediately once you sent me like the email and I was like, that much protein? Like, are you sure? Like, that was really like in my mind, like, seriously? Like, I, I just really couldn't believe it. So, and, and I mean, I was a little skeptical about it, but I'm like, okay, well, you know, <laughs> I, I was a little bit, but as I started to see um, cause part of my issue that I have had with eating is I would do a lot of snacking throughout the day and it wasn't healthy snacking. It would be like sugar related or, you know, drinking lots of sugary drinks. And, um, I think this program more so gave me a place to focus on not what I can't do, but like to add things. So my focus became, Hey, add protein, like focus on adding these specific things to your food. And so it was like, once I kind of figured that out, I'm like, wow, I can't believe that it was this simple all this time. <laughs> I was like, it was this simple. And, and, you know, it's so hard because, you know, you're on these Facebook groups and things like that. And I'm like, a few of them, I'm going to leave them because I can't stand to read some of the things that they say to do now knowing actually going through this you know two months already and seeing results without having to focus specifically on calories I'm like I'm never doing that again <laughs> and I and that was like a, so freeing for me to be honest because again calorie counting I just hate to feel like I'm I feel like I'm going to get it wrong if I have to count I'm I'm like I'm going to get something wrong I want to hear what are the things that you, like you mentioned that you're never going to do again? Like, what are the things that you're like, no, it's I'm not, not I'm never not going to do strength training. So <laughs> like party and I, and I like to jog, you know, but that's kind of like secondary to me now. Like I make sure that I do it, you know, a couple of times a week when I feel like I want to, or like, say it's a rest day, so to speak. And then, and I'm not lifting weights. I'll, you know, do a jog. Um, I'm never going to calorie count again, as far as like, Hey, you only get 1700. That's it. Or whatever the magic number is that day. Um, I don't want to do that again. And that, and, and to me, for me, that was the biggest headache for, with doing any type of program was like focusing on what to eat. Life is hard enough. I don't want to have to think about how many calories something has specifically, like that's all that I'm focused on when I'm trying to figure out what to eat. Yes, yeah, so I think I found the perfect title for this podcast. And I think it, it came to me when you were saying about the other Facebook groups. And I think they were trying to, aka, shrink themselves to success. Yeah. To me, unless you're training for like some type of competition or something, sometimes they have like this excessive amount that they're exercising that I'm like, is it does, I don't think it takes that much An hour plus a day. If you're just a regular person and you're not like in a specific competition thing is a whole nother level. But if you're just regularly just trying to get in your exercise, I don't understand why it has to be that much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have found that people end up living in extremes where there's yeah. either an all in or an all out. We don't really see their all out sometimes we always just see they're all in yeah. <laughs> and yeah but competitions there's for sure there needs to be uh balance uh within that as as there's like three months on or three months off like having like right. an extreme that is that is whew, it's just too much for the body to be honest what have you noticed in the weight loss industry that is kind of ways of shrinking you down shrinking in like weight loss to me is like 
it's going to shrink your confidence. You're shrinking your knowledge because then you're just, you don't really know. They're not really educating you. Uh, there's nothing really empowering about it. It's just kind of like, oh, well, you failed. Okay, we'll just jump back in. You know, I feel like it's um, limiting your calories. There's not like building strength or building knowledge. Yeah, definitely. I'll say that um, a lot of times people will just say, just trust what I'm saying. Like you said, not the knowledge part of it. Just do this, eat these 1500 calories or whatever the magic number is. You do this, you'll be fine. You do this for, and then, and then you wonder, well, what happens when I, once I reach my goal weight? Like uh, they never really talk about maintenance or what are some ways to maintain once you've gotten to this desirable size or weight? Um, and again, it's more so they just talk about the scale that's like a biggest thing. That was one of the biggest things for me. I did tie like my weight loss success to the scale. And so one of the things we talked about in the beginning was like, I understood about losing inches and things like that. But like when the program first started, I said, okay, I'm kind of staying at the same weight because I would just weigh myself on the Fridays. I'm like, okay, but the inches are coming. So I didn't pay as much attention, but I still kind of thought to myself like, but the, but the scale is not moving. Okay. Well, maybe I am gaining muscle. I don't know. You know, um, it kind of made me, cause I mean, basically everything is tied to your weight. You go to the doctor all the time and like, how much do you weigh? And they're not really calculating BMI or anything else. You just hop it on this scale and looking at a particular number. Cause that was the, that was one of the things that I had, like, I want to be this, um, uh, size and I'm not really even knowing if that's really what I want. Cause I'm associating with this number on this scale. I don't even know how, how much, how that's going to look, how much it weighs. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just figure, you know, well, back when I was 20, you know, I weighed this much. And so I want to weigh that much again. Yeah. What's interesting is I love what you just said there is when it's just a number on the scale, but what is that really actually is going to look like? And I, right. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because so often women do get this number stuck in their mind of what they remember their, their past body with, but what they yeah. don't know is that they've been losing on average three to 5% of their muscle mass every single decade after 30. And so they'll end up coming to me after all these crazy weight loss programs that they've tried. And they're like, where has my butt gone? Where are my curves? Or they're just kind of like right. really sad that they kind of are left very soft, soft looking. Yeah. And, and they're like, where's my lifted firm booty that I used to have. And I go, well, you were focusing on weight loss, which was shrinking yourself, just that number on the scale. But what were you doing as far as body recomposition, where you're focusing on building that lean muscle and letting that muscle cut that fat for you? This could have looked a whole different way. And so I love that you mentioned that because women that will come to me and say, yeah, I just want to, I just want to be this weight. And I go, oh, okay. So you care more about the number of that, what that scale looks like. So that like, let's say if somebody were to pick you up that you're light, or right. do you actually really care about what you look like in the mirror and what your clothes fit like? There's exactly. a big difference. Absolutely. Because even though, you know, I get on the scale occasionally and the scale is going down, but I, I wasn't like overjoyed. I'm really more overjoyed about the inches um, that are being lost in to me a short amount of time. And I, and I know that I haven't been denying or restricting myself. I've even had days where I didn't eat the way that I thought I was going to eat, <laughs> you know, um, and, and it's still not, I don't feel like, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm learning to get out of that too. Um, because again, it's still kind of like that calorie thinking you, in, a, in a sense, you know, where it's like, oh man, you know, I ate this or I drank this or whatever. So still some work being done there, but, um, one of the biggest things of this program, and of course it was well worth it. Um, and I'm telling everybody that I know about it, that I know that that's my age and my friend groups is like, we're in our early forties. It's like, Hey, cause I can see they're losing weight. And it's like, Oh, what happened? Oh, you know, I, I stopped and I'm gaining weight back. Hey, you need to try this program because, so I'm really pushing it more so because I'm like, this really actually works. And I'm like, I finally found something that's not over the top, you know, is it's cost effective. And then, you know, um, it's something that I could actually make, I can see myself 
put it into my lifestyle and not something that I'm just doing for six months and then I'll go back and try to struggle to maintain my progress. Okay. Absolutely. Music to my ears, like absolute music, because I've been exactly where you've been as far as just the next to the next and then the yo-yo and the back and forth and just that whole mental capacity that brings you down along that, that feeling of failure. And mm -hmm. I, I'm so appreciative that you mentioned that because, you know, this program is bringing out the empowered version of you and, and going back to your progress in just a short amount of time. Shannon here, you guys, if you don't know, in about eight weeks or less has already lost about four inches in her waist. That's just in her waist. All right. Can you imagine the other parts of her body that she's also lost inches in if she's lost that much in her waist? So I was what's... thinking about that too, because I was like, man, I wonder, I wasn't measuring my arms and my legs, but I know I have because everybody's seeing it. Of course, my husband sees it. My children's like, yeah, you are, you know. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, I love it. I love that your shirt at the beginning. Uh, it's, I think that shirt's going to be hung up in a frame. It too. I didn't even realize that part of the challenge, this is pack season for me, but part of the challenge was to post the progress. So I'm going to post them. I didn't realize. <laughs> yes. Yes. Post your, post your progress. And what's great about it is you're, you're allowing to have that harmony with your body again, and you're allowing the body to start working with you rather than against you. And I think that's what a lot of women don't understand when they're, when they are living life that they're, that they're symptoms of their period that are yeah. like, all those things are not normal or symptoms right. of menopause that are like, really like that's disharmony with your body. That's not normal. So having these weight gain and side effects is actually your body trying to tell you something. And so that was something that's been really cool to go through with you, Shannon, is kind of understanding the body and why it does certain things. And so oftentimes when we're going through weight loss and we're trying to shrink ourselves, starve ourselves, skip right. meals to try to get there, what happens is then our body goes, okay, well, if you're not going to feed me, I'm going to save it for energy later because I still need my heart and my oxygen to keep going. So if you're not going to feed me, I'm going to store it. And then we look at our bodies and we start getting resentful and angry at our bodies of like, I'm starving myself. How am I <laughs> holding on to this fat? And it doesn't make any sense because we don't have the knowledge that all these other programs aren't giving us. And so right. once that knowledge piece and that why is so important. And so I'm so excited to go into that why. And, and I just wanted to hear it from you, Shannon, mm -hmm. as far as really what the metabolism is, tell people what the why is. So in this, this belief before was weight loss, shrink yourself, starve yourself, try to skip corners, you know, appetite suppressant, try to take pills to just try to like burn this off. Now this right. shift over here is your metabolism is working with you. So what is your why and what's your new understanding of how this actually really works? Making sure we're rebuilding muscle for as the, those of us who are getting older at this time. Um, that's kind of what I really learned. Cause I'm like, well, I just got a, a, a low metabolism cause I'm short. It's like, I blamed it on my height. Right. Cause I'm basically like five, three. I'm like, yeah, I read that somewhere that short people's metabolism is just, <laughs> it's true. And I'm like, I just, I'm like, I read that somewhere that short people just have a, you know, their metabolism is naturally just not fast. And I, and I kind of like, just believe that like, well, I'm, you know, I'm short. So it's just like a side effect of being short and not realizing well, that hasn't been true all of my life. Not really thinking about that, but um, just thinking about the building of the muscle, because I do know that there has been a switch because I can tell it. Um, I, I can just feel a difference in my body. I can feel a difference in being hungry and not like just wanting to eat. Uh, like, cause I just want to eat something like physically, like there's something happening um, that's going on in the body. Um, but to me, what I think I'm learning so far is that, you know, having the muscle is a big part of the meta metabolism. And that's why I'm like, I'm never not going to not lift weights anymore. <laughs> like when I, I'm going to do strength training, like that's always going to be like a cornerstone of the exercise and not like something a little extra. As soon as you said that, I can already hear the other people on the podcast and they're thinking build lean muscle. No, no, no. I don't want to look bulky. I don't want to look manly. So what yeah. is that shift for you now, Shannon? Yeah, I'm understanding that it's not about that. Um, 
and and learning how to it's not about lifting a hundred pounds when you're doing bicep curls um it's just about having lots of reps you know um you know, um, kind of making sure that you're kind of including it in different, uh, what I want to say, like intervals of time periods. It's not about that. Cause that's kind of like the first thing I thought too, when you see some of the Facebook groups, you see so, so many extremes like, Oh, she's healthy, but wow, that's, that's a lot of muscle, you know? So <laughs> Yeah, I think I think the uh, bodybuilding of women has really put a lot of fear into us as far as what muscle yeah. looks like. And, and I think what's important to know too is muscle is the metabolism and a lot of people don't put the two and two together. Yeah. And you don't really have that understanding until you know this fact that we're losing that three to 5% of our muscle mass every decade after the age of 30. Hence the reason why the metabolism is slowing down, which essentially is your muscle mass. So now yeah. as we're starting to build that lean muscle through the strength training and making sure that we're not deficient in our protein, shrinking ourselves to weight loss is not, it's just making us protein deficient, which is making, obviously right. you can see now that it makes the whole thing harder. And and so actually building muscle, you guys, I've been, I've been lifting weights for probably now, like, I think I, from the like weight loss journey I was in was in my twenties. And then mm -hmm. around my thirties is when I really started to pick up the weight training. And so I've been in it for about a decade. I'm almost 40 now. And so what I have found is that the weightlifting in order to get bulky, you guys, you have to really be intentionally trying to bulk. Now, when women think of bulk, what they're feeling is the fat on top of the muscle. They're not actually feeling muscle underneath. So what has happening is the muscle underneath, right, is working from the inside out. It's going to be burning the fat from the inside out. That is the workout part. The diet part is from the outside in. So when you are working more on the speeding your metabolism, you're hitting it from both sides being able to do that. But when you're shrinking yourself and dieting, what you're doing is you're actually just working from the outside coming in. And what's happening is the inside is going to start actually building more fat because you're not, your, your muscles too small. So then the fat's going to continue to grow because less muscle, more fat. And so, um, what I found is in order to actually get bulky, a lot of supplements have to be in play. And just as Shannon was saying, your repetitions have to be in like the one to around five rep range. We're talking like you have to be lifting really, really heavy to just stay in that rep range. Now I know everybody that's on the call right now, you're not lifting one to just five reps. You guys are lifting on average anywhere from eight, 10, 15, 20 reps. So now we know how to sculpt our body. So those that are listening, Booty Bands and Barbells teaches if you want to build your booty, girl, I can teach you how to build your booty. We're gonna lift heavier and lower the reps. If you want to kind of keep more of a sculpted toned booty, then we're going to lift medium weight with higher repetition. And so that's what Shannon's saying is, yeah, keep your, keep your repetitions a little higher and having that weight. So really it's going to be very difficult to get bulky. It actually really is. I'm probably going to do that more than the cardio. Cause I still like to jog and I've, I've haven't done serious run. I've only done like a 5k. So I'm not looking to be like a marathon or anything like that, but I, I do like to do it occasionally, but it's like, it's like on my lighter days where I'm like, I'm not lifting anything today. I'm giving my muscles a rest in that sense, you know, while I'll do some jogging, but yeah, strength training is definitely not going anywhere for me. <laughs> That's awesome. I can notice, I can notice everything lifting mm -hmm. um, on me. So I definitely notice a difference. And so Shannon, my, my next uh, and last question I have for you is if somebody is like the previous Shannon mm -hmm. and she was calorie, she's calorie counting right now. And she's just really trying to find her way. She's bouncing from one program to the next. What was something you would tell to the past Shannon? I would say, stop trying to do it by yourself. Cause a lot of times I know I felt like you know, you, you feel shameful about the weight gain and like, how did I allow myself to get here? And so a lot of times I didn't try to seek outside help because I was afraid, I guess, of being judged. Um, and, and I will say this, I definitely haven't felt judged in this program at all. Um, I felt more support, which is a good thing because I, I think I've stayed away from people who call themselves to be trainers, whatever, because they were so extreme. 
And it's like, oh, okay, I had a cookie, big deal, you know. It's like, no, it is a big deal. It's like, oh, okay, I guess. So, <laughs> you know, so I think before I felt like I wanted to keep it to myself um, and try to struggle with it myself, I would say you, sh you should try this program out. Give it a try. Because I said, I'm going to stick to the three-month program at a minimum to see where this is going to take me. And within the first month, I was like, okay, yeah, I, I really hadn't noticed because I wasn't taking pictures of myself. Um, I wasn't really looking at myself as much, but when I did and, and I had my daughter take the picture, I was like, you're taking the picture wrong. I was like, my shirt, something's wrong with the shirt. And then I really didn't realize that the shirt had gotten too big. It was kind of funny. Cause I was like, you're taking the picture wrong, <laughs> you know, with the shirt. And then I realized like, oh wait, it's too big. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of like a happy thing. And it, it was it was kind of funny because I was like telling her, like, you're doing it wrong. Just stand back, move back some more. <laughs> but the shirt was honestly too big. And it, and it was like, wow, the shirt is too big, but I weighed the same for that first month. I didn't have any change in the scale at all. But I'm like, well, who cares? You know, <laughs> it was like you can clearly see from the pictures that something happened. And I, and I share my pictures with, you know, those in my circle, like, Hey, look, and they're like, Hey, I, I see your booty is toning up or, you know, um, this and this. So I can definitely see it. And I am going to post the pictures inside of the group. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. I think what really hit the most too is I felt it. I almost wanted to cry when you just said, stop struggling in the dark. That really, um, I think it can come to a very dark place. And when you're, in that guilt and shame and how did I get to this point how did I allow myself to get to this point I've heard that said so many times and and I just um for those that are in struggling in the dark there is there is a place of whew, there's a place of freedom so um thanks for sharing that that really that really hit home to me so Shannon I just wanted to say thank you for your time today and coming on and just sharing your personal and yet at the same token inspirational story um, I know, I, I don't think you've ever done a podcast before. I uh, haven't, this is my first time. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, doing, a, doing a first, I love it. Yeah. And, 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 and it's a vulnerable place to sit and talk about your yeah. story. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. And I do believe that it will truly inspire those that are struggling to unlearn the old weight loss ways and to be able to break that gel sentence and come over. There is a freedom side, there is a healthy side. And, and I will tell you, you know, I will be your coach guys, but listen, I ain't going to judge you. If you have that cookie, I'm going to make sure that you forgive yourself, forgive right. yourself for the past, forgive yourself for the future. And that's where the true healing is going to come. And so again, I've been encouraged by other podcasts too. So this was kind of encouraging me to get on here because I did listen and watch others. So thank you to all the other women out there on <laughs> to share. Oh, they'll hear you. They'll hear you. That's awesome. So if you want to see Shannon, she is in the Booty Bands and Barbells community. She is in the Sculpt and Tone accountability program right now with Coach Tanita. And if you guys have any questions, please just click the link down below and we'll be able to support you. Thanks so much, Shannon. Appreciate it. All right. Bye. Bye. So I have really never stuck with anything for more than six months until I found Booty Bands Barbells. It's life-changing. The progress over perfection mindset has been so life-changing. Have self-love and to have self-worth. I just do the 10 minutes and I'm already reaping the benefits. The workouts are fun and that they're effective. This is how I lost over 100 pounds with Booty Bands and Barbells. I have seen great results that I never thought I'd ever see. I love it because I'm keeping the weight off. We help hold each other accountable and stay committed to our goals. Booty bands and barbells has really changed my life for the better. I'm positive that you will get more sculpted, more toned, and you're gonna love those new healthy changes and our community and our coaches. From where you're at, no matter where you are or how long you've been in the position. So just click the button below to book the call with our team.